everybody. Uh, welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Kemler. You love our next guest on Orange is the New Black, but Taylor Schilling is trading in her prison jumpsuit for insane clown posse makeup in her next project, Family. In Family, Schilling stars as an overworked executive tasked with taking care of her young niece who happens to be a budding juggalo. Take a look. This is me. I'm a senior level VP at a hedge fund in New Jersey. So how exactly did I wind up here? Because I was trying to do something nice for once. I think it's so impressive how quickly you rose to SVP. How did you do it? By working my ass off nonstop. You're not here to make friends and do not get pregnant. Oh. Hey, girl. Your brother called. But he needs you to go to his house later. We need you to watch Maddie. I'm sorry, who? Your niece. Yeah. I'd like you to fill out an order form for her to be in the proper attire. You know, I just really don't want to. I know, middle school is really the worst. But then everything got better and you're fine now? No, I'm usually in this place where I hate myself, but I still think that I'm better than everybody else, you know? If you're staying long, some of the moms get together to do a Wednesday night potluck. Okay. Is everything okay? No. I'm watching my niece for the week. She's strange. I think she prefers being alone and making weapons of nature. Actually, we're gonna need you to stay just a little bit longer. Time to put your mommy hat on. We had an incident earlier with bullying. I hope you're not encouraging her to fight back. You just gotta fight back. Of course not. And you got her a dress for the dance tomorrow? I wanna wear a dress! We couldn't let her in. She wasn't wearing formal attire. She was wearing a suit and she was wearing a cape. I don't know what could be more formal than that. Yes. Come and need Maddie out of the bounce house. Let's go. You're ruining the party for all of these grown women. Are they here? Okay, let's go have a seat. Sit down, shall we? Yeah. All right. You're checked out. I am not checked out. I'm having a really tough week. I've got a kid trying to be a juggalo. You don't belong around children. No! You belong in an airport wine bar. I just want to help. I don't want your money, Kate. I want a sister. Sometimes I get upset ah, because everyone else is so normal. Maddie, nobody is normal. You gonna be okay? Yeah, why are you being so weird? I'm not being so weird. Stop being such a little bitch. Have a good day. Everybody, please welcome the fantastic Taylor Schilling. Hey. Hi, it's nice to see you again. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, congratulations on this movie, for which your performance is at the center of. And I want to say uh, it is a performance that I think goes beyond sometimes what is expected with like nice comedies. There is real pathos that you bring to it. And you can see in every scene you as an actor working to make this character come alive a little bit more, make their issues come alive, make their moments of tenderness come alive. And uh, I really appreciated that. I thought it was a really great performance. That means so much to hear. Thank you so much. Th thank you. Yeah, 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 of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. thank you. <laughs> uh, what attracted you to this? What made you want to play this part? You know, it's like, we, well, it was really fun to chat with you a little bit earlier. Thank you. This is going to be totally different. Okay, yeah. Very um, formal. <laughs> <laughs> I... Uh, so Laura Steinel wrote this script, and I think that she has she's quite invested in bringing these women to the screen that we haven't necessarily seen before. And I was very captivated by the fact that Kate is in the midst of a, a total burnout. She's in the midst of kind of falling apart. And there is a hole in the center of her life that she can't quite fill up anymore with the things that she's tried to fill it with, namely work. And um, she sort of achieved a bunch. It's all behind her. And she doesn't know who she is anymore. Um, and she's not making any bones about it. She's not looking for a man to save her. She's not necessarily even telling her friends about it. She's just sort of suffering and working. Um, what Interesting. I, what I love about that is that I think, and as I was saying, I think I was saying this in the green room too, is in most movies we would have to see that character be at the top, yes. and then their wife or their husband would leave them, yes. and then they would get fired from their job, and then all of a sudden we would see them have to be like, oh, well, without these things, who am I? Whereas with this character, with all the things that she wants, she yeah. is now going, who am I? It's so... It's so um, poignantly human, I think, to meet someone who 
doesn't know why it feels so bad. Mm-hmm. Just doesn't know why it hurts so much. And you don't, it doesn't, we, we don't see like clear emotional logic, A to B to C to da 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 da, to why she is where she is right now. Um, and I love that. Well, it's so much harder to do dramatically. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's successful here, but that's so much harder to do dramatically. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like, where where's the conflict? You know what I mean? Where's the, if you're going to like, you know, what is that? Like, save the save the cat or whatever? Yeah. Like, that notion. It's like, it's not following the narrative structure completely. It's, it's you're sort of like swimming out in the ocean. Um, and then that it, it's left to the character development to kind of pull the thing through to the end. Right. I imagine uh, Laura Steinel, the writer of this, talking to an executive or a financier or something, and then being like, where's the conflict? And her being like, the conflict's in here. The conflict and, is in my heart. And then going, <laughs> oh, yeah, no. need a... Yeah. But like, it, I mean, and, it, and not only that, I mean, I think that this is a woman who is so, in some ways, she's not playing by any rules that we have set up socially. It, our culture, she's sort of like, uh, kind of like dove beneath the culture, our cultural norms. And in that capacity, there's not much about her that we can deem as a collective that's likable. She's, she's, not, she's not nice. You know, that's not what she values. And to get somebody like that, not only as a character in a movie, but to have a film built around them is is rare. Well, we rarely get female f- female characters that, that are like that. And if we do get them, they are given that A to B thing that yeah. makes it very palatable and easy to swallow. Whereas with someone like this, you as an actor can do a kind of a bit more of like a you can fill in the gaps for yourself. I bet. I bet there's more yeah. work that you can do for yourself. Yeah. That's more satisfying. Yeah. I mean. I mean. I, I. This is. This is so much more relatable to me as a human, and was a story that I thought was, much, more ripe to, to bring to people now. Um, that there's not a lot of logic to what she's feeling. She's just. She's feeling it, and she's experiencing it, and we don't need to make, excuses for it or even rationalize it. But um, she's boldly living the way that she is, you know, the way that she feels she needs to. Did you feel like you had to fill in a fair amount of her backstory for for yourself before going into the shoot? Um, I think so. I mean, there are things that are there are things that are hinted at in the relationship with her father and her brother. And Laura was really good. Laura also directed the film, and we spent a fair amount of time discussing discussing what brought Kate to where she is right now. Um, you know, because there's, there's an element that until she meets Maddie, there's a whole thread of who she is that she can't touch. Kate has made the... Kate finds a lot of who she is unacceptable in our story. And it wasn't until she sort of was able to fall in love with this little one, this little girl who's being bullied and, and ostracized at school, um, that she could make friends with the parts of her that had been bullied and ostracized and um, not included. And in, so in loving this little girl, she was able to kind of come to love herself. It's interesting that you use the word love because one of the things that I was drawn to about the movie that I liked it was that I didn't gather that she fell in love with the girl. Yeah. I gathered that she fell, not, not even fell in love, but just accepted responsibility eventually. Begrudgingly. Yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely. Which in and of itself can kind of become love with a child. Yeah. Because there's so much responsibility that goes along with it. Yeah. You don't want them to die. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the stakes are really high. Mm-hmm. And so at the end, it's like she likes this little girl, but it's not like all of a sudden she becomes motherly or nurturing. No, I love that Kate stays Kate. Kate, the, the, we don't. There's not a fairy tale ending where all of a sudden she becomes like the 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 perfect notion of a of a of a mother, like some maternal pieta. They don't end up, you know, canoodling. This is like Kate. Very specifically, she cracks a little bit. There's a part of her that softens, and I think that that softening is is her healing. That softening is her version of love, and we see it incrementally. And that, again, to me, that was so fascinating because that also feels human. That doesn't feel like wrapping it up in some bow where it's kind of like, eh, okay, well, I guess it's a movie. This really felt like, oh, I, 
I see that. Well, That's kind of movies, how life seems to actually shake down. Most movies feel like they need to have an absurd amount of growth for the characters, right? which is never realistic no. whatsoever. No, there is no. no single experience that ever makes you turn into a different person. No, Kate remains the, the, the person she is in the last scene. Yes, exactly. And I think what's so interesting is, is she's the same person in the last scene that she is in the first scene. You know, we oftentimes I oftentimes look at scripts and say where you know finding the arc feels very vital. And where where's the where's the massive shift, and how does the spine sort of change? And it happens for Kate, but it happens subtly, and that um, I find so endearing and so heartening. And there's also something about that that's like, I feel like it's empowering. Like it can happen little by little, like little by slowly by little by slowly. But um, you know, when you're when you kind of like let yourself get blown off track by life, things can change. Well, she also has a mirror version of herself at a younger age, yes. sort of competing with her, and she gets to see how unfulfilling that is going to be for this, yeah. potentially for this person as well. Yeah, and I think what I love is that so often it's so difficult to feel like a sense of softness or compassion for oneself, and um, in the way Kate's able to harness some softness just by seeing this little girl. She's able to kind of reframe her own her own life by um caring about caring about someone else which is kind of beautiful can we talk about the um the co your your costumes in the in the movie your sort of like business yeah, like casual business cash. outfits mm -hmm. in the for the for the first sort of three quarters of the movie yeah that are like Nice, but not. No. Fit, but don't. <laughs> they don't fit. The entire thing. I mean, it's like, I don't know. This is a woman who's not taking very good care of herself. And I feel like we had a really, we had like a strong vision through like hair, makeup, wardrobe. I mean, I loved it. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. Because nothing really fits. And she does not, she's not taking care of herself. And she's a woman who's exhausted. So nothing, it's not like, you know, like it, it doesn't fit. It does, her, her life doesn't fit. Her clothes don't fit. It's like she's sort of grown out of some things. Yes. And like, it doesn't quite, like she's itchy and it, she, it, she doesn't know how to use her arms. You know, she doesn't know what to do. I like when I'm watching a uh, a project and it feels like a color, you can see a bit of the collaboration happening. Yeah. Like that is an actor's idea. I mean, it might not have been, but that feels like an actor's idea. Yeah. That everyone was like, yeah, let's go with that. That's yeah. a, that that really yeah. works here. It really was like a beautiful. It just was a cool collaboration. I'm glad that you can see that because it was like everyone on board, and that takes that takes a lot of people to make that sort of thing happen. You have to have a bunch of different artists on board, hair people, makeup people, wardrobe people, to kind of make something like that come to life. Well, again, I think in, in, in other movies uh, of this ilk, which there aren't many, uh, there would be, she would be done up to the nine every every day. Yeah. She would be perfect. And yeah. that would have to, we would have to then see the cracks and then yeah. suddenly she would be in sweatpants or yeah, something. Exactly. Whereas with this, she's already a little broken. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting to jump in in the middle of the race. You know, it's really, I think it's an interesting thing. She, this is like the, the, the train is hurtling down the track. She, there's no stopping her. And it's interesting to see how, the, I don't think anything besides starting to have a little bit of compassion for this kind of wild little girl who's been bullied and beaten up. And um, that's the only thing that could kind of like sort of start to stop the train. Now um, the the posse, the insane clown posse, they are in the that is them in the in the movie. It is. Yeah, I don't know much about the insane clown. Neither posse. did I. Excuse me. I so, no how to, so how to go with those guys? I had such a great time. So I didn't know much about the insane clown posse either. Um, there are some documentaries that are really interesting about their whole community uh, that I, I found I found fascinating. But what. One of the things that also seemed to be just sort of magical about making this movie is that as soon as the call was put out in, inside the Juggalo community, there was so much goodwill towards our film because I, so, I guess someone had read the script and saw that Laura was really um, sort of singing the praises of this band of outsiders, which is what the ju what Juggalos are. I mean, it's a it's a it's a group of people who sort of self-identify as freaks and make room for everyone. There's no one that is like, there's no one that can't be a member of the family. It's just sort of identifying as other. And um, it's it feels to me like such an important, 
important space, whether or not you want to actually be a juggalo to respect the notion that they're making space for people who feel marginalized to come together and have a sense of community is so beautiful. So um, I love the juggalos. I, I love them. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm forever a fan. And it felt like it was, it was really special. I felt... So anyway, so all these people, like all, all, the, all these juggalos came down to Atlanta and set up camp so that we could film The Gathering, um, which is this big festival, this ICP festival that happens once a year. And we were recreating it in the film. And out of the goodness of their hearts, a bunch of people came down to play with us and, and, uh, and be extras in the film. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was really incredible. And there was so much loyalty and kindness. And um, yeah, it was really special. It's really special. You know, when it comes to uh, roles for women, Orange is the New Black is provides probably the best roles for women on television yes. in, in movies. And you've been a part of it now for, was it six six seasons? Seven. Seven yes. seasons, this, excuse But me. the season that's coming out is going to be our seventh. Seventh and the last. The last, seventh yes. Seventh and last. Has it been hard to go from that to what other, other scripts that you get for potential projects? Because that show just really writes the best women possible? Well, it sure does. What I think, because I, I was pretty young when Orange came into my orbit, and I feel like it's, for me, as well as for like a lot of people, I feel like who have kind of grown up watching it with me or have like matured with it, um, it's kind of like set my palette. And I have a very, I'm very keyed in to when I feel like scripts are authentically, um, creating space for different kinds of female voices because the bar is set so high. Um, Genji, who created the show, did really a beautiful job with that community of women. Um, so I'm like very grateful to it. It really did kind of, it's given me standards. Yeah, <laughs> it's given which me standards. I'd imagine can be really hard to maintain. Yeah, there's not a way. ton. I think that, I yeah. What I'm finding more is it feels like more and more people are, you know, creating their own material, which I'm just so, I, I'm just so thrilled by. Like, A.D. Bryant's Shrill is so amazing. Natasha Leon, my dear friend, her Russian doll is, like, spectacular. Mm -hmm. And people just sort of saying, like, okay, I'm going to harness my own voice. I'm going to lasso this moment wherein I can kind of create and there's room for me to share. Are you thinking of doing something like that? I mean, I'm always thinking. <laughs> I'm always thinking. Yeah, I hope I'm so. always thinking. Yeah, like I don't know. I mean, I, I I don't know. I don't like. I don't really authentically feel the pull to, to like, write something like that. But I'm certainly interested in in collaborating in different ways. There are just so many, so many smart, talented people out there to make stuff with. Was there a moment with Orange that suddenly felt like? Because you know, I remember the first season. As much as we would dive into these other characters and tell their backstories, it was in a lot of ways you were Piper. You were kind of the star of the show. Right. And then I would say somewhere in the second, third season, it really became an ensemble. Yes, for sure. Was there a moment that you noticed that as the star of the show that you were like, oh wait, I'm an on this is this an is an ensemble. ensemble now. I'm a member of the ensemble. Yeah. I do feel like I feel like I read somewhere that Genji actually said she was like. I always knew Piper was just going to be my Trojan horse. And I was like <laughs> reading it and I was like, okay, now I understand what's going on here. Um, but I didn't, yeah, I didn't really get it. I like wasn't really clued in. But it kind of felt, it also felt like as soon as we entered the prison and the Piper Alex love story was had made, there was some resolution in there. It felt like where else to go but start to tell the stories of these other women. I mean, that was where the interest was. So... Um, but like a very like beautiful natural progression and 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 yeah and we just had so much fun as an ensemble. I was just gonna say I bet that so also kept fun. you more interested. Yes. As a member of the crew, mm -hmm. right? Like not just as an actress, but as a member of the crew, you got to sort of watch the show and yeah. see every all these wonderful actresses get yeah. storylines. I mean that's the that that's been like the most exciting thing about the show is to watch different people who I feel like we just would meet in passing or like see each other in the coming out of our dressing rooms and then hi how are you it's nice to meet you what's your name and then watch them soar on the show to to watch to see a storyline on the page and then watch the season and just see that there are so many opportunities for people to just fly and that's been um it's really it's it's so fun to see that happen for your friends it's really, it's like, it's like one, it's, it's so pleasurable. It's, it's such a pleasure. 
how I mean I've loved watching your career outside of Orange as well because you've been doing well movies like Family but then you did Pat Healy's movie which was I think his directorial debut yes who is Pat Healy if anyone doesn't know it's like this character actor that's been around forever and he's just if you see him you go oh Pat Healy this yes. is amazing that guy he's a real he's and a you real probably were one of the reasons that the movie got made because you decided to do it yeah and you did the overnight with yeah. Jason Schwartzman you've clearly yeah. been invested in using whatever Orange gave you to get projects off the ground. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, I mean, those two projects were with the Duplass brothers, right. who I love, whom I, I really, um, Duplass, whom I, I <laughs> play Is that a word for love? I don't know. I duplass um, them. I duplass them. It is, we could verb it, verb it up. I duplass them. Um, uh, yeah, but it always feels like, I'm always attracted to these kind of like, what really moves me are these like weirder stories. So I don't, yeah, it's just sort of what ends up feeling exciting to me. Do you get offered stuff that's bigger than that, that you're like, that doesn't really? Yeah, well, it's in, it ends up being in the mix. And then also with everything, when you're doing a TV show, everything's also about timing. We, right. That's true. I mean, that's really, right. I you're think more than anything, I, it would be hubris to say it's all my own, of my own choosing, because it's really, it's like a jigsaw puzzle trying to put projects in when you're shooting. You're shooting orange, like what, six months out of the year? Mm -hmm. Like six, yeah. And then they're like, it's six to eight with kind of press and stuff like that. So, yeah. And then once that's over, you don't necessarily want to jump into another three month Correct. shoot, right? You're, right. Like, you're like, I need a second. But then, I'm, I mean, most of the hiatuses, I've spent the entire time making things. Really? Yeah. Like I ended up, sp like, I, I, yeah, one year I did a play. That, yeah, all. What all play started. did you do? Um, I did a month in the country with Peter Dinklage. Oh wow! We have a long. Pete and I have a long history of doing theater together. So really. Yeah, he he actually saw me in a, in a play that his wife directed when I was in college, and um, got me my well him and his Erica his wife got me my first agent. He came to see me in the show and was like, I'm gonna help you out. So he did, and then That's we. Incredible. Yeah, they're they're amazing, amazing people. Yeah, we did we did uh, Uncle Vanya together upstate, a couple years ago, and then we did we did a month in the country, three years ago, four years ago in the city. Is there any theater in your future coming up? I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Is that like most great actors your first love? <laughs> Uh, well, that's what I went to school for. That's like where that's where I I, I went to graduate school. I trained in, uh, at NYU in, in their graduate acting program, and I kind of sort of what I sort of actually it feels like real acting. Well, that's yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's like, that's uh, like when you're trained or, or when you when you go to school and you train for acting, it feels like you get to use that training when it comes to theater, right? And yeah. you don't necessarily get to use a lot of that a lot of the tools in your box for yeah. film and TV. It's different. It's definitely different. It's definitely different. I do think that I, I, I don't think I'd be able to do the work that I do in film and TV and like keep my brain, my wits about me if I didn't have the theater training that I have. So it's sort of, they, they feed into each other. But yeah, thank you for asking. That's an interesting question. I mean, yeah, it, I'm really, I do hope though, now with more time that I can make, you know, make my own bed figure out what I want to, what I want to do. It's usually like what people say when something bad has been made. Yeah. <laughs> I just really hope I can make oh, right. my own bed and lay in my it. own bed yeah. and lay in it. No, 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 in a very positive way. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, we have a question coming in from Twitter. Uh, you did a play called A Month in the Country. Oh, we were maybe, did you just write this question based off yeah. of watching this? Back in 2012, is theater something you considered doing more of? Um, yeah, I think we yeah, just covered that. We, we yeah. did that. That we was that. awesome. Should we just jump to the audience Q&A? Uh, does anyone in the audience have a question? Yeah. Yes, she is planning on doing more theater in, yes, the, in the future. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Gloria. Hi, Gloria. I would like to know, which actor inspires you to work harder on your career? Um, you know, I saw Jessica Lange in this movie called Francis when I was 11. I was very young to see this. It was pretty intense. But I, um, she, she's someone that inspires me tremendously. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank I saw you. the movie The Public. Oh, thank you. So Jessica Lange when you were younger? I mean, that's yeah. kind of like, Francis is kind of like a... It's a bit heady. Yeah. yeah. But it's also such a huge performance yeah. as well. Yeah, it's like really sort of like explodes open the whole idea of what it means to be an actor. Yeah. So it kind of like shaped my psyche a little bit. Like Jessica Nicholson Lange. Five Easy Pieces, kind of. Like it's the that same. sort of thing where it's like, yeah. you can do that? Yeah, like that exists. I didn't, before that I was, you know, watching The Sound of Music, which I love. But I, I then, it was a totally, yeah, I still, that's just, it's such a, 
it's such a seminal moment in my life when I watch that movie. Um, next question, right here, hi. Hi, uh, my name's Jennifer, and wanted to know what, well, you guys were talking about it, but upcoming projects, are you gonna take a break since you just finished filming Orange is the New Black? Yeah, well, I mean, th this is happening right now, and we just finished Orange like six weeks ago, so I'm kind just of- Just finished shooting the last season? Yes, which what, come out in- What was the rap like? What was that whole- Oh, it was very emotional. Yeah. Yes, it was very emotional. It was very, it was like, very shocking when we ended, the last scene. It was just, it felt very like- Did the last shocking. scene involve, not the last scene that you shot? The last scene that you? I shot. And I wasn't in the last shot of the oh, okay. last episode, but um, my last shot was, we, you knew it was coming, I mean, I knew it was coming for years, but it was so strange to have our, our final, moment just know I wouldn't be on that sound stage again as as this character I'd never play this character again after seven years it was like a rib it was like a visceral visceral reaction when you heard the ad say that's a rap on on Piper what it what was just tears it was just I, I yeah I started shaking actually yeah. I didn't expect that I was gonna feel very emotional because I feel like I, I'd covered that ground already we'd already like said goodbye and stuff but it was very emotional very emotional yeah. Um, so yeah, do you have any other projects that is to answer the question? Um, right now, I'm right now I'm sort of perusing in terms of what I'm going to be shooting next. Uh, last question. What do we got? Hey there. Hello. How you doing? Hi. Uh, my name is Dan Pierce, and so in your movie you play an overworked executive. Yeah. I'm wondering. Uh, I know for me and for a lot of people out there, that that feeling of stress, overwhelm, anxiety—not even just for executives, but for anybody that has a job—is yeah. so common. Uh, yeah. So I'm wondering how you, as a successful actor, practice self-care and maintain a healthy work-life balance. Well, that's a great question. It's a very good question. Um, I work on it a lot, to be honest. I think that that. That you know, I, I once a very dear friend of mine once said that it takes, it in any capacity, it takes talent to have talent. That if you don't have the like self care skill set to take care of yourself, whatever you can put out into the world is going to be short lived. Um, and I used to not believe that, but now I do. I I do things like meditate, which is like eh, it's hard, and I don't always feel any like freaking it doesn't do anything but it does do a little bit and so I keep going with it it's it's helpful and I also really lean into my community I have a really strong circle of um friends and people that I I that support me and I think that that's connection is vital to kind of staying out of the the muck thank you yeah thank you um, Taylor, I love your work. Congratulations on the film Thank and a you, wonderful so performance great. in it. Um, it comes out the 19th, which I believe is this week, which I, I believe is this Friday, Friday, right? Yeah. It's called Family. It yeah. comes out on Friday. Everybody give Taylor Schilling a huge round of applause for being here. Thank you. Thank you, guys.